tomorrow before sunset, you take your mother and anyone else that you can persuade to go. And you leave town. I think they're dead, Father. Run! Now you're a part of mine. I'm a priest. A <laughs> priest. <laughs> Well, it's Friday. Welcome back to VHS Reanimated. I'm Creepy Gill, the lonely uh, store clerk, and uh, I'm here each week to recommend a classic horror film that I feel like doesn't get enough attention or justice or something that we should take off the shelf, dust off, and uh, rewatch for the first, second, or two or three hundred time. Have you seen Salem's Lot, the original miniseries from uh, 1979? I think it's 1979. This is uh, Stephen King's TV movie adaptation of the book by the same name. Well, actually, not quite the same name. The book has an apostrophe before Salem because it's short for Jerusalem's Lot. Um, the actual name of the town. But the movie, they changed the name of the town to just Salem, I guess, to make it sound more uh, witchy. But, uh, yeah, the town is actually called Jerusalem, and there should be an apostrophe. That's why you'll see the book and the movie have a slightly not always noticed uh, difference. So, the movie, miniseries, I don't know how I'll refer to it. I'm going to call it a movie. Even though it was a miniseries, it's been edited to be, uh, you know, a three-hour movie. That's the way I saw it originally. The movie is about a writer that returns to Salem after leaving when he was like 10. And he goes back to Salem to write a book about this creepy mansion up on the hill that his aunt used to uh, work at or live at or something. But when he was there as a kid, he got some creepy vibes. He thinks he saw a ghost. And he has this theory that the house is evil and it's attracted evil because there's some murders and some weird stuff went on there once upon a time. So he's got this like idea that uh, evil places attract evil people. Jason, do you believe a thing? can be inherently evil. I've seen trees that look like tortured spirits. A house. The Marston House, for instance. Can it be evil in its stone foundations, in its wooden beams, in the glass of its windows, in the plaster of its ceilings? Evil. And you think? I think that an evil house attracts evil men. And, well, what do you know? The same time he shows up in town, an antique dealer named Stryker shows up um, to open an antique store, and he talks about his partner who's overseas named Barlow that will join him soon enough. He has to get the store up and running, and then Barlow's going to come in and help, and the two of them are going to rent the big creepy-ass mansion. Um, about the same time, people start dying of material uh, mysterious illnesses a bunch of kids at first and some adults and then the writer ben starts to like have this wild crazy person idea that there's vampires afoot because a few bodies go missing um jumps to conclusions right away but eh, he's right vampires 
Strickland's not a vampire, or Stryker's not a vampire, I'm sorry, but his partner Barlow is a vampire. He's the master. And uh, Stryker's role in this uh, two-person operation is to travel a couple weeks ahead of Barlow, set up shop, get things lined up. He's kind of the assistant and uh, the daywalker version, I guess they call it in some versions of uh, the vampire story. It's kind of like the boots on the ground guy. Get the apartment, line up a, a backstory, whatever. Assist in the day-to-day -day operations of uh, running a vampire uh, undead army. So Barlow ends up showing up eventually. He's like this Nosferatu style vampire, creepy as hell. And uh, starts turning everyone in the town into vampires, except for uh, Ben, this other little kid that's pretty damn cool, that uh, resists the vampire temptation. Oh yeah, so this uh, is what I really like about this movie anyway, is that these vampires are not dreamy, romantic vampires that you get nowadays. These are basically zombie, monster, undead army guys. But they have these like really hypnotic, bold eyes. And when you stare into their eyes, they kind of mind control, hypnotize you. So most of the deaths come from the vampire just staring at you. And you are unable to look away and you just slowly approach them. And then they uh, bite you on the neck and whatever, feed off you. So it's really cool that, uh, you know, this one kid, he resists the vampire early. He's like mentally strong. Ben can also do this. A few other characters to different levels of uh, success are able to like delay the inevitable. But the vampires are like, you can't not stare at a vampire. Too hypnotic. Bill! Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The, the gist of the movie is uh, Barlow, the head master vampire, slowly turning everyone in the town into vampires. Ben and his girlfriend and his girlfriend's dad and the little kid are wise to this and they start to uh, formulate a plan to take him down, head up to the old mansion with some holy water, some steaks. And uh, they want to fight the vampire and uh, head off this uh, attack. Everyone in the town is either already a vampire or running for their lives. Because they don't know it's vampires. They just think there's a plague or something. Because everyone's turning up sick, dead, or missing. My favorite part, favorite part of Salem's Lot is when uh, the kid is visited by one of his childhood friends that got turned into a vampire, like at the window in the middle of the night. He comes rapping at the window, scratch, 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 let me in. Um, super scary as a kid. As a kid, I watched this movie and then like, good luck trying to sleep that night every little branch or any noise outside you just think it's a friggin vampire rapping away let me in let me in terrifying Rewatching this movie uh recently the sound effects were really jarring too it's like a nails on a chalkboard kind of sound when he's like scratching at the window
and then uh yeah super creepy just staring at the eyes and the teeth it's like this is a friggin cool vampire i need more vampire movies like this in my life Best death? Best death? Uh, my favorite kill in this movie is when you see Barlow for the very first time. They're a uh, family dinner, everyone's in the kitchen, questioning the one kid about saying you saw a vampire, and then the house starts shaking, there's like this cloak forms on the ground, and the whole family like stares in awe as this cloak raises from the ground, and then lifts the hood and it's a friggin' Nosferatu style, Barlow, master vampire. He screeches and he grabs the parents and slams their head together, Three Stooges style. It sounds friggin' silly, but watch it in real time and it's frig. This movie stands up. It's like almost 40 years old and damn. I should also uh, mention this movie was directed by Toby Hooper from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 1 and 2. 2 is my favorite. I friggin' love Chainsaw Massacre 2. We'll get to that movie eventually. But this is also a Toby Hooper film. I think he gets a ton of uh, name recognition for his work in Chainsaw Massacre. But a couple of his other movies that he's done are friggin' bangers. Masters of Horror, banger. Salem's Lot, banger. Chainsaw Massacre 2, banger. I already said that, but Chainsaw Massacre 2, banger. He does another Stephen King movie called The Mangler, about a piece of machinery in a factory that comes to life and kills people. Also friggin' love The Mangler. So, Toby Hooper, rest in peace. One of my all-time favorite directors, and he's got a thick, a thick body of work. Check out all of Toby Hooper horror movies, and there's a bunch. Okay, okay, quick sidebar. Speaking of bangers and the Masters of Horror TV show, one time uh, a few years ago, I was uh, kind of on a date with this girl. Anyway, she was like this cool like horror movie girl, like the best kind of girl. She invited me over to her apartment one night to watch some horror movies. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I know what that means. Quick little bird bath on my way over. And then she puts on the episode of Masters of Horror with this like Chinese midwife that just like delivers babies and then throws them in a river and drowns the kids. It's like, what? What the heck kind of date is that? Completely killed the mood, completely killed the the banger, the banger aspect of this story. I, I didn't hang out with that girl ever again. She was way too weird. Like, who invites a boy over? You know, like, come over and watch horror movies with me. It's midnight. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. On my way over. And she puts on the friggin' Drowning Babies in a River movie. She was too much for me. And that says a lot, because I'm friggin' creepy. Kinda sucks about Salem's Lot, this original version, is uh, it's a TV movie. So there's really no violence or blood or gore or anything like that that is a little bit more necessary in a movie like this. Like, I wouldn't say it's necessary, 
because the movie holds up. It's scary. It's so creepy. There's so much atmosphere. But, ugh, imagine there was some blood. It's a friggin' vampire movie. They, like, bite each other on the neck and there's no marks or anything. And it's kind of attributed to, like, oh, the vampire has this power to just, like, suck your life out of your neck. It's not really drinking blood. But then, like, all the other kills pretty much happen off camera. There's, like, one toward the end. A guy gets thrown into some deer antlers. But otherwise, everything kind of happens off camera. And every seven minutes or so, the scene fades to black where they would have uh, edited in a commercial. So rewatching this as a three hour movie, which is the way to watch it. This is a marathon, binge this movie. It's uh, kind of like in weird digestible pieces. Just like seven minutes, then fade to black, fade back to color. Salem's Lot, 1979, Stephen King miniseries about vampires, specifically this version has the Nosferatu style vampire, which is far and away the creepiest, scariest vampire, he's like a screeching, I don't say any words, I'm just gonna stare at you with these like monster eyes, huge friggin buck teeth that look like they'll go right through your entire head terrifying movie stands up super old stands up not much violence but you don't really need it because there's so much atmosphere so much uh just built in creepiness with this little tiny town in maine originally called jerusalem now called just salem um salem's lot watch this with some friends especially in a binge setting it's a three hour horror movie how often does that friggin happen three hour horror movie about vampires Written by Stephen King, directed by Toby Hooper. Boom, take my money, take it, take it. Uh, until next week, I'm Creepy Gill. This is VHS Reanimated. It is October, in case you don't know. So you should be watching a freaking horror movie every night. This episode, I've said friggin' the most out of any other episode. New world record for amount of frigs. I don't have any frigs left to give. No more frigs. So uh, I'll see you next week with another animated movie recommendation. Until then, get your costumes ready. Get those candy apples ready. Every fifth candy apple gets a razor blade. And please, please, remember to rewind or die.